Today we are going to be showing you how to troubleshoot an engine that won't turn over on your JLG machine. Machines with tier 4i engine will not turn over with the ignition keys which in the start position and there are no fault codes present. Some possible causes for this could be A faulty relay A damaged harness Or A faulty starter Troubleshooting steps 1. Remove the key switch from the dash leaving the wiring connected to the key switch. Using a multimeter verify 12 volts at the red wire on the key switch. If there is not 12V on the red wire then check the F12 fuse in the power distribution fuse box in the engine compartment. 2. With the key switch in the start position, verify 12 volts on the purple wire connected to the start post on the key switch. If there is not 12V on the purple wire then replace the key switch. 3. After verifying the key switch is good, locate the forward slash reverse selector. Verify the purple wire labeled key switch signal has 12 volts when the key switch is in the start position. If there is not 12V on the purple wire then a continuity test will need to be performed between the purple wire at the forward slash reverse selector connector and the purple wire at the start post. If the continuity test fails then the cab control, chassis, and dash panel harnesses will need tested separately to determine which harness will need repaired or replaced. If there is 12 volts on the purple wire then verify the forward slash reverse selector is in the neutral position. Verify 12 volts on the brown wire labeled shift power 1. If there is not 12V exiting through the shift to the brown wire replace the shifter. 4. After verifying the forward slash reverse selector is good, locate the park brake switch on the center dash panel. To gain access to the park brake switch the center dash panel will need to be unbolted from the dash. After gaining access to the park brake switch and with the key switch in the start position verify 12 volts at the brown wire labeled shift power 1. If there is not 12V on the brown wire then a continuity test will need to be performed between the brown wire at the park brake switch and the brown wire at the forward slash reverse selector connector. If the continuity test fails then the cab control, chassis, and dash panel harnesses will need to be tested separately to determine which harness will need to be repaired or replaced. If there is 12 volts then verify the park brake switch is in the on position and the key switch in the start position. Next. Verify 12 volts on the orange wire labeled start relay. If there is not 12 volts exiting through the park brake to the orange wire replace the park brake switch. 5. After verifying the park switch is good. Locate the starter lockout relay located under the radiator. To gain access to the starter lockout relay the angle bracket cover will need to be removed from the outside bottom edge of the engine pod. The starter lockout relay is a Bosch style relay bolted to the side of the box under the radiator closest to the frame of the machine. After locating the starter lockout relay with the assistance of another technician or machine operator to keep the key switch in the start position and verify 12 volts on the orange wire labeled start relay at terminal 30, pin 1. If there is not 12 volts on the orange wire then a continuity test will need to be performed between the orange wire at the starter lockout relay to the orange wire at the park brake switch. If the continuity test fails then the cab control, chassis, and engine harnesses will need to be tested separately to determine which harness will need to be repaired or replaced. If there is 12 volts at the orange wire labeled start relay, with the key switch in the start position verify 12 volts exiting the orange wire labeled start lockout signal on terminal 87A, pin 3. If there is not 12 volts exiting through the relay, then replace the relay. 6. After verifying the starter lockout relay is good. Locate the start relay mounted under the radiator. The start relay is bolted to a bracket under the radiator closest to the outside of the machine and has a two-pin wire connector plug in it. After locating the start relay with the key switch in the start position, verify 12 volts on the orange wire at the connector using the black wire as ground. Also make sure the black wire has a good ground. If there is not 12 volts then a continuity test will need to be performed between the orange wire at the starter lockout relay to the orange wire at the start relay. 
If the continuity test fails then repair or replace the engine harness. If there is 12 volts. Then test the 20 amp fuse located under the cap on the start relay. If there is 12 volts and the fuse is good verify the heavy gauge wire exiting off the terminal post on the start relay has 12 volts. If there is not 12 volts replace the start relay. If the start relay test is good. Locate the orange wire entering the starter solenoid on the starter. With the key switch in the start position verify 12 volts to the orange wire at the starter solenoid. If there is not 12 volts then a continuity test will need to be performed between the orange wire at the start relay and the orange wire at the starter solenoid. If the continuity test fails then repair or replace the engine harness. 7. If all troubleshooting test procedures have tested good. Then replace the starter. Note, make sure not to over tighten the nut fastened to the orange wire on the starter solenoid. Thanks for watching. You can find a link to the detailed troubleshooting steps down below in the description, and you can find all the parts and equipment used in this video over on our website gciron.com.